Okay. Hello. Welcome. Oh my gosh, I just love seeing all of your faces here. I'm sending you a hug from the wings of my heart. All the way from here to you. We now connect in this sacred circle. Timeless. Spaceless. Oneness. And here we are, conscious, magnificent creators and creatrixes, gathered around the fire of our passions, our longings, and our deepest loves, saying yes to living, yes to a life that ignites the fire from deep within. Tonight we gather on the dark of the moon. This is one of my favorite times of the moon cycle and I share her with you. Because I love her and I love all of her faces and I wish for you to connect with her in this way. The moon, our sister, our mother, our bestie. The goddess within every man and woman and child. The sacred feminine, fueled by the light of the sacred masculine. We gather here as all of it. The new moon is tomorrow and it is a time where this eclipse season reaches its zenith. Where we have felt the turmoil of the challenges, of the changes. Where we have connected deeply with what we choose to cast away from us, to release from us, from our lives. And sometimes those gifts are unexpected. <laughs> what actually falls away, what actually leaves us is very unexpected. And so we deepen into trust. And this is what Dark Mother tells us, reminds us, connects us with. As we journey deep into the longings of our heart, of our soul, of our bellies, deep down into the marrow of our beings. We listen and we hear and we feel the song of our hearts emerge. Whether your eyes are open or closed now, I want you to summon to you the energy of star anise. That beautiful star-shaped, spicy gift from Mama Gaia. We place her to steep in our cups, to steep in our cauldrons of goodness. We use her as a pendulum, as a way shower, as an opener to our depth, breadth, magic. She's the one that says, reach out, open up like the star you are, and remember who you are. You should deepen your connection with that crown chakra, soul star chakra, stellar gateway chakra, and the many, many, many layers of chakras above. Breathe that aromatic fragrance in now. You don't need the star anise before you in essential oil or in the spice form. You just know, you know that scent. Suck it in, draw it in, bring it deep into you. And if you have cacao with you, take your cacao into your hands. 
I of course have sacred elixir cacao right here. And breathe deeply of your cacao. Breathe deeply of this dark moon. And become aware right here, right now, of everything you choose to release. Don't worry about the details. Just get it out there. All relationships that do not serve me. All languaging, be it from myself or from others, that does not serve me. I release you now. I release all binds, all ties, all holdings, all connections that keep me bound in a vanilla muggle life. I unbind myself now. I release it all now. And I choose to be magical. I choose to be the star that I am. And take a sip from your cacao or your herbal tea, whatever you have, with intention. Take a deep sip. to the sacred medicine of cacao, to Mama Gaia, to Sister Moon, to the sisters and brothers within this sacred circle, I bow to you, I see you. Take a moment to journey inwards and feel the turning of the wheel now. The lunar cycle is taking us inward, ever inward, releasing. Here in the southern hemisphere, the wheel is turning to the winter solstice, to midwinter, the time where hope is restored, where the light returns. The solstice itself heralds the shortest day, a longest night. Feel what that feels like, the dark night of the soul within you. Nothing to fear, everything to embrace. There in the shadow you find all that was unowned, all that has been unseen, untouched, unlooked at. And you see it and you smile at it and you say, thank you. Thank you for helping me to be who I am, everything I am right here, right now in this moment. And I release you now. I release us both from the tethers that bind us together. That you may fly free and return to your natural source. And that I return to my innate state of pure love, mischief, magic, joy. And for our family in the Northern Hemisphere, the summer solstice, midsummer, the magic, the magic, the longest day, the shortest night, the light now begins to wane. Where ours begins to wax, yours begins to wane. And so, you are doing the same thing, my loves. The restoration of hope from deep within you, connecting with that. Take a sip of your cacao. Feel her medicine course through you. Be touched, be blessed deeply. I love you so deeply and so completely. And I want you to behold yourself now in your mind's eye. Imagine a mirror of light before you. And around it is a ring of fire because tomorrow, sweet loves, we have a solar eclipse with this new moon. And because she is quite small, you'll see her smaller. And at sunrise, you will see the sun eclipsed mostly by her and that eclipse will show us a beautiful ring of fire around the sun so you'll see the sun darkened and this ring of fire and i want you to behold yourself in this mirror now this mirror of light this ring of fire around it and see yourself as you truly are notice the shadows the brightness the music the melodies the longings the stories yearning to be told the dancers yet to be danced the songs yet to be sung and take a deep breath in and pause that breath and listen listen to the sound from deep within you listen can you hear it can you feel it release now you are all on mute i want you to have courage i opened my beautiful book i'm going to introduce our guest today but 
I'm going to start with Jenny, who we're going to end with. And I opened my beautiful book that she gifted me on page 111 when I asked the message for you all. And I want you to breathe into your hearts, breathe into that sound that's coming, and get ready. A courage is cultivated in our hearts. With a closed and broken heart, it becomes harder and harder to be brave. We can heal first by addressing our hearts with love and forgiveness and then practicing courage by getting in touch with our inner strength. It comes from deep within. So that song, that sound that you hear, are you ready? We are all on mute. Let's open up our airways. Let's open up our vocal cords. Let's connect our heart with our throat chakra and our crown with that blessing of star anise. Take a deep breath in. And on the exhalation, release your sound. coming days give space for that sound as you clear with a waning moon and dark moon time as you clear what doesn't serve you create spaciousness for what is ready to be born you create a landing space within you for what is yet to be born it is succulent it is divine it is you you are not separate from it be it become the embodiment of all that you long to be. Deep breath in. Take a sip of that cacao or that herbal elixir you have. Give thanks. Next up, we have two divine sisters who I feel so honored to walk this path with. They've tickled my heart. They've sizzled my third eye. They've grounded me deeper into my connection with the goddesses and Gaia. They are Leah and Paige. You'll see Paige's prism and, fur and fleur and Leah just right there. Give a wave, ladies. They have created what has become my favorite oracle deck. This light's not so good, my beautiful. Maybe I'll put a light here so you could all see me because it's a bit dark here, but you'll see it. There we go. They're holding her up. Paige Prism and Blur is the artistic creatrix behind this. They're both pure channels, and Leah works her pen womanship into it, channeling the language of light that needs to come through in a way that we can all understand. And together they have created mm -hmm. a key oracle. It is powerful. It will take you on a journey. Yeah, look at <laughs> my voice. The goddess gals are all holding it up. And next we have, oh my gosh, my soul sis for a long time. My beautiful dark moon sister, witchy poo, beloved, gorgeous friend, Chloe, I love you. And her beloved Jamie. A little while ago, they got in touch with me because they know I'm such a cacao whore. Yes, I am indeed. And they said, baby girl, can we send you some? Can you trial her and tell us what you think? And I was like, heck yeah, send her over. I had a mouthgasm, a heartgasm, and an everythinggasm. It was a cosmic orgasm. My heart cracked open. I do love chopping up the cacao and, you know, all of that. But I tell you what, opening up this cacao... Oh my gosh, the packaging, right? Just like the Goddess Oracle cards. And opening to find this packaging and this pod ready. And all I need to do is add liquid and essential oils if I feel like them in there on that particular day. And then I end up with this. So after Terraki take you on a journey channeling a reading for you for the group of the Goddess Oracle. We're going to drop into sacred cacao 
medicine and I'm not going to say mama or she or anything because as we know she is he and he is she because it is all one right um and Jamie and Chloe will take you deep with cacao medicine and we are going to um wrap up with some deep journey work and that's why I said bring your journals because you never know where this is going to go with Jenny from Ultra Mondo Yoga Yoga she created these journals from her heart and when I received it I cried I just felt like this is a journey we all need to go on so that's why she's here and I want to share her and her incredible yumminess with you all because you know what if we're going to buy stuff it may as well be investing in juiciness that enhances our lives. And these three offerings to us all, oh my gosh, crack me open. And my sweet loves, I'll just bring essential oils in as and where. Use the chat, ask me. I'll wrap it up right at the end with some deliciousness of whatever that will be that I channel and um and we'll close out so we're going to be together for two hours i love you thank you for showing up live we had just under 200 people register for this all over the world you'll all receive the recording yeah and we have two giveaways my gal sam is here and she'll organize the giveaways okay all right leah and Paige, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Um, we're so honored to be here. It's uh, it's also my probably my favorite moon cycle. The dark moon is uh, renewing. It's very renewing. Um, and we, I guess, very inspired by the moon goddess alike. Um, I'm going to introduce, for those of you who haven't met our cards yet, here they are. Um, Leah and I created these cards with the intention of really tapping into a feminine divinity that resides within all of us. You know, as Vanessa said, there is only one. Um, and we really, like, I, I can't wait to show you them. But um, maybe we should, Leah, go over, I guess, what oracle is for people who maybe don't quite know i think that might be a good place to start um i think that the first thing to mention about oracle is that these these decks don't really come with like the history and years um that tarot cards do i guess they're a more modern invention so each deck is quite unique um their visuals and their messages are channeled via the creator or creators um, who have had a vision or a calling, I suppose, to kind of bring their, their idea and, and their emotiveness through as a tool to help others, um, I guess, reach out into the numinous and bring information earth side. Um, it's pretty simple to use. So Leah, do you wanna do you want to take um, everyone through how we use a deck? Sure. Um, so the basic steps that we generally use, which you don't have to do, you can do whatever your intuition tells you. Um, but we always start with like cleansing a deck. So either with a bit of like ethically sourced Palo Santo or a bit of sage or um, if you can't today. burn anything, incense, if you can't burn anything like a smudge spray and like swoosh it around or even like really intentions kind of um, can cleanse a deck so then um really sit in and just connect with your energy and spirits energy or your spirit guides and just kind of like remove your attachment to outcomes that you might have um that's always key because whenever you go with a specific intention they always tend to give you something different um so yeah so just always have those questions that you want to ask in your mind, you can say them out loud, you can write them down, um, however you like to operate with your spirit guides or if you're just settling into your intuition, if, you know, probably speaking them out loud and writing them down would be a good way to start. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can pull cards. You can either do them intuitively. So say you just have a question and you pull a card and you need a little bit more 
guidance or elaboration on that, you pull another card. Um, I mean, that could be a slippery slope if you don't know where to end, but um, you can also do a spread, whatever you're comfortable with. I personally don't like to really work with spreads. I like to intuitively pull um, and let all that guidance come to me. Um, yeah, so then you can use your intuition and the cards, our cards specifically have um, keywords and a key phrase at the bottom. Um, so you can go with that and then dig in deeper with the symbolism and the artwork. Um, and then if you need a little bit more guidance, the guidebook is all channeled messages from each goddess. So they have come through and basically I wrote what, you know, they had um, told me. So yeah, so they each had something specific to say and um, that's all annotated in the guidebook. Um, and then Paige, I think you wanna talk about a bit of the astrology with us. I did. I firstly wanted to um, mention as well with Oracle decks, something that I find is really important is to avoid yes or no questions. Now with a tarot for anyone who's familiar with that, they are better at answering yes or no questions. However, when you ask your cards a yes or no question, you're kind of asking for instructions. You're asking for something outside of you to make a decision on your behalf. Um, to make your commitment for you or for something else to choose your path. And that to me doesn't really do you justice. It doesn't do the people around you justice. And it's just altogether kind of disempowering. Um, I was gonna say, so, it takes away your power and hmm. um, that's not the intention for you to be an oracle. Oracle cards yeah. or um, divination tools. It's not to take away your power, it's to strengthen your, um, what's already in With, you innately. Exactly. Exactly. So I guess questions that I personally love is stuff like how, how can I move towards something that will serve my highest good? How can I open myself up more? How can I, you know, connect more with people around me? These kind of things that are sort of more internal introspection rather than external asking. It's, it's, it's much more, um, empowering that's literally the only word that's coming to my mind right now um okay so with these oracle cards what we are going to do for you guys is a collective reading and this will be for the eclipse portal and it's focused on a kind of clarity and i guess detangling um of no doubt like a lot of uh downloads that we've all been getting because we're in between eclipses right now so that is always quite erratic energy I find and just to add on top of that now the moon is in Gemini so even more um it's it's a lot so hopefully we can get a little bit of clarity there um there is one other aspect that we have right now which is the Neptune is square moon um and this how do I explain it kind of allows us to grasp information that is usually a little bit more out of reach. It allows us to kind of tune into the frequency of Neptune, which is like the veil and the, the higher consciousness, you know? So just touching on quickly, this first eclipse in Gemini happened in November last year. So whatever has been happening for you kind of in that period of time, this is probably somehow related to what is unfolding for you now. Um, and since this is the last moon in the cycle, it's probably the lessons are a lot more loud, <laughs> um, and a lot more obvious, I guess, than the last round. So again, this is why we've chosen a clarity and detangling kind of reading for you. Um, we're going to do just a simple three card spread. So hopefully it will it will help you guys because i personally lean on three card spreads quite a lot this one is going to be first card for present energy and focus of the collective the second is for unlearn like under 
or unknown kind of aspects or things that maybe you need to acknowledge or pay more attention to um, might be blocking you. I'm not sure how that's going to come up, but the third card is going to be an energy which you can be calling in as a support, which is always helpful. We always want to end with something that's going to help us get up and out of a situation or move on or release as Vanessa so beautifully helped us kind of get into that gorgeous space right now. So Leah, do you want to pull cards? I will do so. <laughs> Sorry, my shuffle process is like extreme. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just do one at a time and then you can go through and yeah absolutely you know while you're shuffling you cute little thing you i want to say i want to interject here i bought one of their gorgeous altar cloths because i'm obsessed with everything <laughs> beautiful like i love beauty and um i don't remember the one it's called we can link you to it but I, I put out my altar cloth and I, I put my cards over it and then I, I pluck my card or cards and I have oils that I'm going to marry and I always have my cacao elixir there and a candle lit and it's just really heavenly. So part of my intention for this was an invitation to bring the sacredness to every part of your life. Like just make, make the things that mean something to you a ceremony. Just create ceremony for you because you're so dang amazing. You're fucking amazing. So make a ceremony of that amazingness. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to speak to the altar cloths. Mighty Silk, they also have vegan ones. They didn't have it then, but I will be getting some of those as well. So mwah, just a shout out to the magic you create there. I have one here. All right. So this is this is very interesting. <laughs> I love this poll. Um, so the first card is Elios, generosity. Um, and that is given you shall receive. And this is a fun fact. This is actually my mother. So I really love that she came through on this reading. <laughs> That's so sweet. Okay, so current energy. I really like that. I find that so beautiful. Okay, so Elios, for anyone who wants to have a look. Oh my gosh, why? There we go. Oh, you've got her as well. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it very well. <laughs> so her message, give and you shall receive. That to me is so beautiful. I oh, All right, I'm going to read from the guidebook just so that we have something to go off here really quickly. For anyone who isn't too familiar with Ilios. <clears throat> EFG. Okay. What you give, you will have returned to you. This is the cyclical nature of the law of attraction. Make no mistake, the universe knows no bounds. There is an infinite supply for all who exist. I am here to remind you that there is no need for you to cling needlessly to possessions or finances or routines. I'm reminding you that turning your focus outwards and finding ways to share yourself or your resources with those around you will bring a far greater feeling of fulfillment and happiness than refusing such. Generosity must be incorporated into your life, however small or large your efforts, they are impactful. So that energy of releasing yet again, that more connection to what's important, the inner, the relationships, the love, those like special moments that actually have no tangible remnant in your life. You know, that, that level of like, just connection, that pure generosity, that pure love, that embodiment of being a human, you know, connection, it's important. And then we have, what's the second card, my darling? Me, it's Isis. Oh, no way. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm actually Isis in the deck too, if you guys didn't know that. Um, I am totally going to let you talk to her. She <laughs> is your girl. <laughs> girl. Um, so yeah, so this is, you know, underlying unknown aspects which are needing to be acknowledged. Um, and Isis is the awakening card. My journey is an evolution of many lessons and renewals. I'm expanding. 
Um, right now, I think that this is also a very good card for everyone to take in because there are lots of downloads as we were talking about, lots of shifting um, happening the last couple weeks. And um, I'm not sure if anybody else, I don't know where everyone else is located, but I'm in Melbourne and we're in another lockdown and we have been for like almost two weeks. So um, I've definitely been feeling like a lot of this hasn't been happening because I'm so like downtrodden with collective emotional weird erratic eclipse energy happening so um i really find this a great reminder that <clears throat> it's still happening even though i'm not recognizing it um i can you know shift out of a low vibrational state so i can feel that further um so that's what i feel like isis is saying there um, perfect absolutely <laughs> absolutely and then last card which is also very funny um Hecate. And so the third card is about the energy which we should be calling into support. Um, so Hecate, the card is about solitude. Simplify your thoughts, give yourself space. Not everything needs to be done right now. Um, also very funny <laughs> to be said. So again, I really feel like this is a huge message just for everyone to slow down. Um, again being in lockdown or being in this kind of state of solitude all we have to kind of lean on sometimes is working and um hustling and being productive um you know and trying not to waste that time while you have it in your tangible kind of hands at the stage so i feel like this whole message is about focus on what's important focus on your loved ones Focus on the things that can make you happy while you're going through all these erratic, crazy periods. Everyone's growing, everyone's adjusting, the collective energy is shifting and really feel into that. Um, so that's what I feel for the collective energy on this poll. What about you, Paige? Absolutely, I, I'm exact. I When you pulled um, Hikazi as well, I immediately thought about making small <laughs> things important in your solitude. Like Vanessa was saying again, you know, even if it's as simple as a silk scarf, you know, or as drinking your cacao, that is so ceremonial and beautiful if you decide it to be. And that is your power. And that's for you to really allow yourself. And remembering that, like setting yourself, I don't know, maybe a reminder or writing yourself like a post it note and stick it on your fridge to make the small things important. It's like, that kind of energy to me um just a real slap in the face is what it is <laughs> in the best way <laughs> it's very gentle though i feel quite um i yeah. feel supported by that i don't feel like there's anything there that we needed to kind of clarify i feel like is there any questions actually that anybody had if anyone wanted to unmute or drop in the chat even a lot of people are feeling like it's so like so bang on here's the word that was used like so clear and, and <laughs> giving them what they needed yeah? yeah i really love the goddess for messages like this especially when you're aligning them with the moons i find that that divine feminine just aligns so perfectly that it's almost impossible to not get a reading that is really, really clear and just gives you so much. It's literally like a hug from like a female that adores you. I don't know, like whether it's a mother, an auntie, grandmother, sister, anyone like that. I swear these goddesses, it is impeccable. They truly are just I never expected when we made this deck to be able to connect with something this widely, you know, and there's so many people who will all be pulling these exact same cards in the next few days and you can watch it unfold. It's incredible. So I'm glad that you're all feeling that. Mm, thank you, beautiful sisters. Thank you so much, my loves. What's really interesting, I just want to bring to light for a moment is Hecate chose to stay on the earth plane to leave Mount Olympus as it was and to be on the earth plane here with her sister. She is the goddess of the hearth, of the fire. She brings the fire to humanity. She's the nurturer, the mother. She's the fire within us all. And for this solstice energy and this eclipse energy, she's that reminder of everything has a season. 
what you're experiencing right now isn't for always, it's for right now. So if you were to just sink in, if you were to just drop in, what would you find right there in the fire of your belly? Within the word hearth is the word heart. The hearth is the heart of our home. The heart is the hearth of our sacred temple. Isis, the winged goddess, again, the mother, the nurturer. Elios, mother energy, nurturing energy. The three have come to take you in their embrace. And Gaius speaks and says, give it to me, my sweet children. Give it to me. You were never meant to carry this. And so they take those challenges. They take what weighs heavily upon you. And they return it to its natural state, which is love. Anything that doesn't come from love, remember, it is merely fear. It comes from fear. So we go back to that beautiful journal opening of courage. Our courage is cultivated in our hearts. Courage. Courage. Cour. The heart. And so we keep coming back to that. And what better way to dive into the heart space than with sacred cacao. Cacao works with our physical heart, our sacred heart, our energetic heart of hearts. And so now, with a deep bow of gratitude, Leah and Paige, and that reading that you brought through that transmission, we thank you. Chloe, Jamie, the sacred elixir, bring her to life for us. Let's dive in. Weave some of your magic with us. Hello, Hello. my loves. Hello. Hello. Can you hear us? Mm hmm. But it is wild in Melbourne, and we are high in the treetops, and we're doing our. <laughs> Literally, it's like a wind tunnel here. I keep getting up to put towels. So the wind is blowing the water through our windows at the moment. So if you can't hear us, we're very sorry. <laughs> but it feels fitting for the uh, element of the moon that we're in right now. So it feels very inward and dark and reflective and chaotic and delicious. Um, and so we thought we would take you on a bit of a journey on how Sacred Elixir came to be. Jamie's experience and mine because they're quite different and something that we both love about cacao is how personal the experience is and how ever-changing it is as well. Um, so do you want to speak into how it came to be? Yeah. I can weave my, we love to talk. Both of us love to talk. We do love to talk. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I guess TSC came to life because it all started um, not long after me and Chloe first started seeing each other. We would brew cacao on the stove, as we love to. Um, and then it just sort of dawned on me one morning that some days it can take, you know, 15, 20 minutes from start to finish to, you know, chop our cacao, make our brew, blend it, pour it, and then sit down and enjoy it. Um, so the idea was born from there. As much as we do love to take our time to carve cacao and to brew our cacao, and we do do that often as well, we don't always use our pods. Um, but the whole idea around using cacao is to slow down. So in a busy life like ours, we have five children. We're a big blended family with a very full plate. And some days and mornings or nights, whatever it is, it's just not possible to take that 15, 20 minutes out of our time to you know, have that. Takes away from the moments that we could be in ceremony together. And that was more valuable for us than preparing the cacao. Yeah, so I guess the, the ideology behind it is we're speeding up a process to have more time to slow down. So over, yeah, over about a 12 month period, there was lots of um, <laughs> trial and error, but uh, at the end of the day, we have a beautiful product to show for it. Um, yeah, it's really brought us closer as people, it's brought us closer to community, and more importantly, it brings everybody individually closer to themselves and their heart space in that time they get to spend there. Yeah, and the concept of the ease and convenience around the pod was to make ritual and ceremony accessible in our daily lives. Like what Ness was talking about, it's like 
you know, take those small moments of time, those small moments of things that are deeply important to you and create them into ceremony. That's, that was really the concept that we wanted to bring forth with the pods was like, you know, like, like Jamie said, we have five kids and a lot of our community are young mums. We want them to still have those moments of deep ritual in their life, even if it's two, three, four, five minutes of sipping intentionally on their cacao so they can keep connect deeply into themselves and connect deeply into the earth and their community. Like, what a gift. And so I think, you know, it was to really um, dismantle the concept that ritual and ceremony has to be hard and big and ambiguous it can be so simple and really what it comes back to is the intentions that are behind it. And so if we can pass simplicity through the pod and making the product into every aspect of your ritual in your day, what a beautiful gift, mm -hmm. you know? And we felt that. We felt the ease and grace and the luxurious of time utilizing the pods in this way. And it feels like such a deep privilege to bring that to the world now. And um, yeah. I mean, there's also the side of it as well that um, for people especially who hadn't tried cacao before, we know a lot of people who are first time cacao uh, tries and either they've made it incorrectly or someone's made it for them incorrectly and it's, it tastes like poo. It didn't taste very good or it didn't have a very good effect <laughs> and it scares them away forever they don't come back and have a bad experience. So a part of that is knowing you know, how to brew cacao, what ingredients to put in there because not all ingredients are equal. Um, so the quality ingredients for us was really important. We put in there the, the highest grade, organic, ethically sourced. Um, you know, the cacao we source, we could have got cacao from anywhere because cacao is quite easy to find these days as it has exploded onto the scene the last couple of years. But the connection we've made from a small women's co-op in Guatemala, from the other side of the world, where they farm it there in a very small batch, the intention that goes into that, and we get to have that connection with the culture halfway across the world, the other side of the world, we get to bring that back here and that's the heart of what we are trying to get to people. So a lot of the intention was getting the right things into the pot as well was made it convenient for people because people then also don't know how much of that to put in there. How much do I need of like, you know, people aren't sure what, what is a ceremonial dose of cacao? How much of it should I have? When can I have it? All the questions. So we wanted to take that kind of guesswork out of it as well. Yeah, it's like when you have red wine at a footy function when you're 15, opposed to having red wine at a restaurant when you're 30. <laughs> we wanted to like bring that concept of like making that possibly that first time experience really joyous, really beautiful, really heartfelt and connected. And so, and from what we've heard so far, I think we've only been serving her into the world for, I think we're at our 12th week. Yeah, about maybe. Three, three months. Yeah. Like, but, you can all feel it. Those beauties that have experienced her, you can you can feel it, and that's you know such a testament to how much integrity and intention we placed into what we were creating. Like Jamie said, we could have taken shortcuts, but that wasn't what this was about for us. It's really we're just messengers for this sacred plant medicine, for this plant spirit, especially in this time that we're living in now. You know, we want to connect humans. We want to open hearts. We want to create that unity. We want to remind you and us that we are all one with Gaia and what a beautiful plant to utilize to facilitate that because it's one of the oldest plants on the planet. You know, sacred chocolate, it's so ancient and it has such a deep history and it's such an honor to be a messenger and a vehicle for service of that plant spirit. I think yeah. like as in Chloe was saying before, we both have different experiences with cacao. Um, Chloe's more, I guess, you know, we talk about cacao being that bridge between the head and the heart, you know, um, which is beautiful and it is a heart opener. And I do feel all those things personally, but for me, um, I'm very grounded within who I am. So my connection back to earth and grounding myself is very big. So for me, cacao is about history and where it comes from. And I guess uh, in a nutshell, from plant to cup, you know, we're not just drinking sacred chocolate. We're drinking a story. We're drinking history. Like I said, we, we saw sacred cow from Guatemala, um, from a very small village. Like imagine, this, imagine the stories that come with that, the farmers, the, you know, the women who are, you know, preparing this for us and it's journey to us. It's just that for me, when I sit there in my cup, it's not just, sacred. it's very sacred for me. You know, it's not just me, it's many lives, many heartbeats, many connections, all in one. You know? So for me, it really brings, and 
I mean, cacao in general, yes, it's a hard opener, but all it really does and for us personally believe is it's cracking open what's already there. You know what I mean? It's just a catalyst for what we all have. Mm. So yeah, for me, that's my experience with cacao. Yeah. yeah. And I really loved what Leah and Paige said about, you know, tools being really like activating what's there and um, an extension of you. It's the same with cacao. I think as humans these days, we are so quick to look beyond us for answers and guidance when really it's it's all there. And so for me, my experience with cacao is that inward journey of reminding me of what's already within. Um, I had my first experience, experience with sacred cacao and this is not gonna be everyone's experience, but mine was in ceremony with a shaman. And it literally <laughs> cracked me open into a million pieces. I was mind blown more so by the fact that Something like cacao and a ceremonial space could allow me and my body to go to those places and those depths. I never trusted myself to go there before. And being in that setting allowed me to know actually what was within. And although the cacao and the environment was incredible, it was facilitated by me. And it was gaining back that power that I had so easily handed over. And so I think I sat with her for the first it <laughs> talking to the itch um i sat with it for the first time about four years ago and it was a benchmark for me every six months i would go and sit in ceremony with sacred cacao and um, my medicine teacher and it was kind of that checkpoint for me to remind myself of the true depths of who i am in this human experience um, my first experience i went back to seven past lives with Cacao, <laughs> this is what she, what, what it offers us, you know, if we trust ourselves, she, it deeply reminds us and allows us to surrender into what we already know, but we've forgotten. And that's what I love about cacao. It's the deep remembering. There's a deep lineage in this plant spirit that when we allow ourselves to be with her, with it, <laughs> it's because I'm sitting with Ness and she calls her she. <laughs> Chloe, Chloe, I think it's okay for you to say, I think like if you feel her as a her and Jamie feels more that it's just the oneness of both, that's okay. Just keep yeah. saying she. That's, <laughs> that's where you're at right now in this place. And I get I'm ultra feminine and Jamie knows that of me, but you know, some of us, some of us will feel certain plants as she. I'll feel red mandarin as a red as a female crone, and Jamie could feel it as a as a Maori male shaman. You know what I mean? It, it's just your experience. So just just stay. And in my, my experience definitely shifts, and you know, I think about exactly yeah how the sacred elixir was birthed. I'd been working with and using sacred cacao many moons before Jamie came into my realm, but without the masculine element the sacred elixir would have never birthed. And so I, I really see it as that synergistic, symbiotic connection between man and woman, masculine and feminine that was that allowed sacred elixir to be birthed into the world in the way that she was. And, and so uh, me sitting with the medicine, I never had a thought of like, this is what I want to bring into the world until Jamie came into my life. And then it felt easy and graceful and like, of course we would do this together you know and so what what a gift i was lucky enough in 2019 to go to the lake where we actually saw our cacao from and drink the medicine on the earth and it just just the story of how it came about is just so potent and um symbiotic and there was so much alignment it's just really beautiful so both of our experiences are different for me it's very much um, the environment so if i'm sitting with myself it would be more of an inward heart opening experience um, depending on what time I'm at in my cycle, it might be more a grounding experience. If we're sitting in ceremony together, it's definitely more about love and connection. And so that's the way that we kind of work with the magic and the medicine. It's ever changing. So never think you're going to have the same experience. <laughs> that, that's the potency of cacao. She takes you on many journeys. <laughs> Can you speak to um, a, a ceremony, like how they could simply take her in ceremony, create their own ceremony or ritual for the ceremonial cacao? Because like you said, I think that many times, Chloe and Jamie, people can kind of get really afraid of, oh my gosh, I've got to do this and I've got to have the right crystals and the right chance. And, you know, it's, it's so simple with intention and heart and mind alignment. Can you speak to that a bit so that they can 
they're all waiting for their TSC to arrive. Let's show them what to do when they get it. Yeah. We both can, yeah. But I think, yeah. like you said, it doesn't need to be, like you said, get your crystals out, light all the candles and incense, you know, make sure there's no kids in the house that's dead silent. <laughs> you just, you know, it's like literally making your cow and walking straight out onto a piece of grass or earth and dirt and planting your feet in there firmly and, you know, giving a quick gratitude and thanks while taking a deep, long, intentional sip. That's ceremony. Mm. That's all it needs to be, literally. And that's like the start and end of like where ceremony can be. Mm -hmm. Like it is beautiful to sit in a proper ceremony that is pre-planned. Um, but in terms of everyday life, for people like us in particular who never have a quiet house, <laughs> we might not both have the same time of day where we can both sit down together at the same time and enjoy that together. So some days we do take time to it's separate ceremony time. And then there's some mornings we can find time to sit down together and have you know some crystals we might do a, a sage or a smoke um but there's no right or wrong it's whatever feels right to you yeah. just even like i said even um even just brewing the cacao whether it is with one of our beautiful pods or if it is carving a block and make it yourself that's ceremony mm. it's what you make of it i think it's really coming back to the simplicity us as humans love to overcomplicate everything in life when really life can be so simple and so like what jamie said you know, oh, we would love to be able to sit in ceremony for an hour every morning. That would be blissful, but it's just not at this part of our life and the amount of children that we have running around and how young they are. It's just not something that's attainable for us. So, you know, like Jamie said, for me, it might be brewing my cacao and I love, I love walking out property. And, and so I'll get out and I'll drink my cacao on the property. That That's ritual for me some days. Other times it will be, using sacred fungi and actually sitting in ceremony for two hours together in quietness and stillness, doing meditation and breath work. So our biggest message around ritual and ceremony is don't complicate it, keep it simple. It doesn't need to be almighty and magical all the time. It can be messy. Sometimes the messiest parts of your ritual and your ceremony are the most transformative. And so take the pressure off, mm. yeah? <laughs> Ritual doesn't need pressure on it. Ceremony doesn't need pressure on it. And every now and again, allow yourself the space to go into ceremony with a facilitator and be held because it is, it's magical and beautiful and transformative. And yeah. sometimes you can drop into that deeper place of surrender. And so, you know. That, that being said, you do have the opportunity to, to go and attend a, a proper cacao ceremony that's being facilitated. I highly recommend it. It is a beautiful experience and one that's different every single time you do. And it's very different to just the everyday ceremonies you create yourself. So do your best to try and take a variety of experiences when it comes to the ceremony, for sure. Yeah, ceremony can be big and it can be small. But I guess um, also talking about like how, how we use the cow here in our house as well. Um, probably might talk about it a bit, like we'll talk about ritual ceremony, but a big thing for me and Chloe in our house, how we love to use the cow. Um, we use it as, you know, cacao can be used as not only a teacher, but a mediator, facilitator, mm -hmm. consolidator. And a big thing for me and Chloe is when we need to have big conversations at home, whether it be good, bad, deep conversations, <laughs> even just talking about everyday life things that we actually uh, we need to talk. For us, we always brew a cacao, carve out that space and time at night when the kids are going to bed or if they're at school during the day. Mm -hmm. And we sit with our cacao in hand. And for us, that helps guide us through whatever it is we can just speak through. And that's a really big thing for us in our house. Mm. And you can do that individually with yourself. If you need to inquire, you can, yeah, inquiry. If you need to inquire Same within space. and ask the questions, or if you need to sit with your partner or your family and talk as well, it really is a great facilitator yeah. for your feelings and your thoughts. We find if we go into deep conversation with that intention, like our, our wall is already down, our guards are down, our guards are down, and the heart becomes more open and amplified when we utilize the cow too. And so you can go there. Again, it's like that, it's another layer of the lessening of surrender, you know, allowing yourself to go into deeper places within yourself and together in union or community. What a gift, mm. you know, what a beautiful gift. Mm. So we use her in lots of ways. Um, yeah, and then sometimes we amplify cacao with other sacred plants. Like we love, love, love utilizing our essential oils. And so, like we said, if we're going into deep conversation that um, involves a lot of 
compassion and openness and understanding, we'll use rose. We'll use a drop of rose in our cow. Or if you don't have rose available, geranium is amazing for the heart space. You can utilize that too. We can use that internally. If we need that deep grounding, so I find, you know, if I'm coming into a full moon and I'm really heightened and maybe the energy of my cacao is a lot more feminine and wild, I might use some Frankie. I find that he's really grounding. Jamie's really deeply connected to frankincense. And so it's more of that really pulls us in along with the cacao because it's a deeply grounding plant spirit facilitated with, with um, frankincense. It's a powerful powerful time and then like back to talking about because i'm deeply connected to the history and connections and origins of our cacao mm. in guatemala from the lake of titlan where it actually grows over there the cardamom and the cacao grow synergistically together so we love to actually incorporate cardamom into our cacao as well which is just the spirits already so there so epic just... and it really really is a powerful tool yeah, yeah. for me that's one of the most um inward combinations of oils and cacao like i i i feel like we both have the most profound shifts when we use them together mm. yeah powerful combos. yeah really powerful and so you can have fun with them this is another like think of your cacao cup as your cauldron and alchemize her brew her with mm. whatever your heart or your mind or your body is calling you to brew her with and just feel the i was gonna say watch but no feel feel the experience transform it's i remember the first time jamie and i had rose in our cacao and we were both just like so 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 wild and so listen and feel the shifts and the changes notice what drops in notice what washes away she's really great at dropping the bullshit <laughs> really great at that yeah, and you know, and then that leads into having a beautiful space to journal. Like, what comes through when you're sitting intentionally with cacao is really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think maybe we should touch on why we jump between he and she and it. Mainly, we call it it because we feel it's all encompassing. So, my experience of cacao for the first time was feminine. It's, she's a she, and so you'll resonate, like I said, with things differently. But after really deeply understanding. Um, History of cacao, it actually started as a god, it started as a male, and it's weaved its way into more of the feminine. Do you want to speak into the god? Yeah, well, like the maize god that was originally known as that, it comes from that. It's a long story from it, but it started off that way from, from what we were taught anyway. And I guess just through history, it's sort of found its way through the feminine energy. And what the lightness said, it's really comes what down to, to what it is to you. You know, I mean, history is great, but I think in the day it's what resonates with you most. And I think that's beautiful. It doesn't yeah. have to be rigid. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It can be fluid and whatever you need it to be. What I love about that aspect of the history, it's like the masculine, the feminine, the light and the dark, the yin and the yang, the all encompassing. And so when we often call it it, it's not to take anything away from the power, it's more to give it back the power of it being an all encompassing plant medicine. Um, it's got, it's got its light aspect where it really deeply opens the heart and connects you both to the cosmos and the earth plane, but then it has a very deep shadow aspect. And so when we're working with our shadow self, far out can it pull the shadow forward for us to work with. And I love that because like Ness said, I am a witchy poo, I am <laughs> the dark witchy sister. And I love that side of cacao um, that we've, we get to experience particularly with this strain of cacao that we get from Guatemala and just one more thing as well we need to touch on is that whenever we create our beautiful pods there is a series of processes that are non-negotiable that we go through mm. and that is a big thing for us which comes to energy cleansing hygiene practices mm. so before we actually create and pour our pods we will never ever do that if we are not in a good mood there's been quite a few times that, you know, we've gone to, okay, we need to create and pour the cow tonight and it has to be called off because- we had a fight. <laughs> had a fight or there's been some bad energy floating around. We just don't do it. You know, like I know people who won't take a glass of water from somebody if they're angry because they just don't want to transmit their energy across. We're the same. And we're the same um, because the intentionally goes into it. So that's a big thing for us before we chop or prep cacao and before we pour, we do a sacred smoke 
and a cleanse of the space each other and the, the space we're working in. Once the pods are finished and wrapped, we will then give them one last smoke. We then cleanse them with sound, various types of sound. It's the sound man. We do love sound. <laughs> Sound's a big thing in our space. Um, and just a lot of intention and prayer goes into what we're doing. It's not just create and pack and send as well. Yeah. From literally, from the moment it leaves as raw product from another, another country to the moment it arrives on your doorstep, there is so much intention and steps and processes and love. Every lots, pod of, is lots of love. Every single, hand painted, every single hand pod is hand painted, hand wrapped. It's an actual labor of love, but we love to do it. And we really, really hope that that intention finds its way into your heart and your minds whenever you take this sip of it. So, yeah. yeah. That you feel the integrity of exactly what you're consuming. Yeah. Um, so, we might just say if anyone has any questions, feel free to open up. Where... There's one that's just coming now. I'm just trying to read it. Is cacao okay when breastfeeding? I had issues with low supply. A friend mentioned the women in Amazon drink cacao to help milk flow. So for the past three months, I've been using ceremonial cacao daily. I feel it has really helped. Have you experienced anything with, have you any experience with this? Also, is it okay to be drinking at night because of high energy of cacao? So we recommend everybody is unique. Everybody is unique. And so... Um, we recommend maybe starting with a half dose of a pod if you're breastfeeding or pregnant just to see how she interacts with your body. Um, some people are absolutely fine and others aren't. Same goes with day and night. Um, like we've just had a cacao now and it's nine o'clock in Melbourne. We will be able to drift off to sleep fine, but we have a few friends if they drank it at this time of the night, they would be hanging from the chandeliers. So again, just... Just listen to your body. I also find that it changes for me depending on where my emotions and mood is at and where I'm at in my cycle. And so if everything's really heightened in my life and I drink a cow at nighttime, I find that I, I can't sleep. Um, but in terms of breastfeeding, yes, very safe. Just play with the dosage. Um, I recommend possibly adding some fennel into it when you're consuming it because fennel is really, really fabulous for milk supply. Um, so you can have those two plant medicines dancing, dancing together. Um, and just take note of how it interacts with your body and your baby. That's the biggest thing that you need to take from that space because um, it could be a factor of many things. You know, it could be the cacao. It could be that you're, I don't want to go into <laughs> giving advice, but you might be a little bit dehydrated. So if you're dehydrated, get drink more water, especially around cacao, because she can be a diuretic. Right, so make sure that you're keeping the fluids up as well. So, um, I love the story about the Amazonian women, though. I've never heard that, it's really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And I just to clear up as well, in case people don't know what is actually in our pods, obviously, it's got ceremonial grade cacao. We add extra cacao butter, has coconut sugar, uh, maca powder, and has for a variety of biodynamic mushrooms. So five ingredients that go into it. Um, in terms of ceremonial doses for cacao, like that question will come up because a lot of people hear ceremonial doses, which are quite higher than what we put in our pods. Um, mm -hmm. If you were to go and sit in actual cacao ceremonies facilitated, you'd probably be looking at, you know, you know, close to double the amount of cacao per dose in there which is not the intention of what we wanted no. for everyday use, obviously. Yeah, we did the amount that we did to make it safe for home use and, and self-ceremony. Um, we are very big on keeping the integrity of plant spirit. And so unless you've worked closely with cacao or you're sitting in space, the ceremony of dose will be much different. Um, but in, in um, following up with what Jamie said about the ingredients, Having that beautiful fat bomb cacao butter in there would be so nutritious for breast milk and breastfeeding yeah. mothers. It's going to give you that extra oomph in your diet because you know how depleted we can become when we're feeding. Mm. So if anything, it's going to help you feel more nourished and help bubs feel more, more nourished as well. Mmm, yummy. So um, beautiful, you guys. Thank you. Yeah. I don't have any questions we're just going to finish with the cacao prayer if that's okay and then we'll pass it on yeah yeah i would love for you to finish with the cacao prayer so if you feel called to closing down your eyes um if you have your cacao still you can sip on her it he 
or if you've already finished it up, just feel it in your bloodstream, feel it moving around, around your body. And as you sit with this potent plant medicine, this heart opening gift from Gaia, we want you to remember the powerful connection this plant medicine creates. Connection to the heart, connection to self, connection to the plant realm and mother earth. As you hold your cacao in hand with reverence, take a moment in gratitude and pause as you call in cacao plant spirit to be present with you. Whisper sweet blessings into your cup as you take a sip. Thank it for its potent offering, its capacity to take you wherever you need to go, for its ability to deeply ground and send to you while opening the heart. May the cow spirit guide you gently on your journey within. May it deeply ground you into Mama Gaia, allowing you to feel held and supported. May it connect you to your higher self as you set, shed layers or open up your creative flow. May it allow you to trust your intrinsic intuition as you activate and open higher realms, both internally and externally. May it ignite your physical and emotional body as it tantalizes the pleasure senses. May it invoke and balance both the masculine and feminine polarities within as it moves through your bloodstream. May it spark love and joy as it dances with your cells, reminding you of the powerful magic that lies within. With deep gratitude, I thank the cow spirit for weaving its magic here with us tonight. Blessed be. I hope. Mm, mm, mm. I love you. Thank you, darlings. Thank you. Yeah, blessed be. I want to show you how divine this is. So it comes in this sacred vessel, right? And the sticker, you'll see sacred geometry, flower of life, energetic, magic, and the ingredients. Um, just to be clear, those medicinal shrooms are really safe. Some people, I get messages all the time about the cacao I use, what I infuse it with. This is, this is like traditionally what we tend to infuse it with anyway, so it's there. There is a little bit of whole sweetener, coconut sugar. It's not too sweet. I want to speak to the bitterness of cacao for a moment because life is full of sweet and bitter moments and everything in between. And cacao reminds us to allow ourselves to be open to all of that. That's why cacao is such a sacred journey worker through the shadow and through the light. It's not afraid of the bitter or the sweet, yeah? You can definitely add, and you saw one of our fellow sisters wrote that pinch of cayenne in there. You can add extra shrooms. You can do flower essences that you've made yourself or that maybe you purchase um, or just essences that people have energetically brought in. And it comes with this, which gives you a little bit about the cacao and how to make her. So please don't feel overwhelmed by, oh, how do I make this? And I want to speak to, you can add a nut or a seed milk. Chloe, I've got you. You want to say something, don't you? I'll finish this and then I'll cross over to you. One second. So you can, you can add a, a nut or a seed milk in here. You can also add just really good quality water. Something that's beautiful is make a tea infusion. So for the mama who was talking about breastfeeding, you can make yourself a pot of tea with fresh fennel and some chamomile, maybe some licorice root, whatever it is for you that calms you. They're really good for baby's belly as well as your milk supply. And you can use that as the liquid. So my cacao tonight has an infusion of all organic rose petals, some schizandra berries, um, blue lotus, and some damiana in there. And I make a tea and I've poured 125 mils and then another 125 mils of the Nutty Bruce almond milk because I was too lazy to make my own almond milk. And I always have that on hand. Now... If this isn't a ceremony, I don't know what the fuck is, because seriously, this is amazing. So there's my pod in this rose gold foil. And then I open her with all the love and yumminess. Meanwhile, I'm singing their praises because they've made this so pretty and it just sings right into my I love everything pretty factor. So I just unraveled her. Are you ready for this? Hand painted on sacred geometry 
T S E. Stop the press. Be still, my beating heart. I mean, seriously. And if you go to their page, their Insta, you will see, you will see the the intense delicious beautiful cleansing and clearing that comes with this so i'm about to move over to jenny but chloe i believe you wanted to add something sis <laughs> i was just saying to jamie um should we tell them because every pod has a sticker on the base that has a sacred geometry that's on the base and on the top so they're all energetically attuned to the seed of life because they sit on the sacred geometry so that's another aspect that will or you inward to your inner knowing and your remembering of how deeply you are connected to, to the, yeah. So if the Oracle cards and the cacao haven't fully cracked your hearts open, this next part will. This will be the completion to the wings of your heart unfurling. I just know it. So I welcome Jenny and, you know, Jenny had this vision of bringing the movement and care of this sacred temple and the journeys we take inward. She had this vision of somehow bringing it to life in a tangible, practical, yet utterly glorious way to the people. It is imbued with the sanctity of mudra of mantra of affirmations of the sacred chant of the song of the heart of the physical yoga yoga asanas of creation energy it has beautiful art with the watercolors it is a journey home this whole night hopefully you have felt the blessings of this journey home and there is plenty of space within to write as well to write to draw to be present i mean hello stag so stunning so jenny hello beloved all the way from europe welcome yes. my love <laughs> hello Thanks. speak to us sing to us about your creation and you and what brings you here my love what a lovely introduction. Thank you. Do you hear me well? Okay, great. Uh, I'm in Stockholm. So yes, we are uh, very far apart, most of us, and very close still. So thank you all for this um, amazing, wonderful words. I don't really actually know how I will. <laughs> you. You said it all, but I think it's so lovely, like uh, Vanessa began to speak about the ring of fire, because um, that's actually just um, that's actually just what can bring us when we find ourselves in the ring of fire. Um, that is a, um, um, a portal where we can begin to do our transformation because my belief why I did this book is that if we begin to share our stories we will see that we are not alone that we are community and we can begin to heal so this notebook this uh, healing you because it's what it's called is actually um, a continuing sister book to my book, Healing Yoga, because sometimes we are so tired, we don't even have the strength to read, to look, to um, go into intellectually. We need like more direct conversations. So I thought, let's make a guided, uh, a guided journaling because we know that the written word can be keys for us, but what do we just sit down and write? Uh, so sometimes that's so difficult. So I thought like giving openings to our inner scriptures would be a good idea. And I'm so uh, thrilled that uh, Vanessa, you opened with courage because that is what, <laughs> I mean, it's all about to, 
to, to break the silence so we can stand stronger, to share our stories so we can stand stronger. And that um, takes a lot of courage. And with all this that we have been so um, very gifted by this last hour, uh, what Leon Page said, the detangling, I mean, that's what we do when we begin to write. And when we write in a flow, when we have done our practice, like maybe breathing, having our cacao, reading, just going within, and we begin to write um, on an offering, like a guided um, journaling, and we begin to read that, what we have written in a flow, that is actually detangling. So it's, it's so wonderful how this um, all comes together. And what Chloe and Jamie said with the answers inward, I mean, yes, <laughs> that's why we need to do this. That's why we need to begin. So just um, to um, begin, this guide is designed to help us to, to come to insight, to tap into our internal state. And we can do that with all these ways, but uh, journaling is one of the ways. And um, to begin to uh, charge our batteries by reading our own truths and um, allowing uh, us to see them. And um, the more work that we put into this spiritual development, the more we will be able to grow our courage that I believe lives in the heart. Um, one of the first things though is love, as we have been speaking about to, today also, that I'll just write, uh, read to you what I've been written here. During and after difficult events in life, which uh, we all have, it is so common to carry, carry negative emotions that can create obstacles. Uh, obstacles to loving ourselves and thus prevent us from flourishing and living the life we desire. This can lead that we retreat uh, and we um, come with heavy hearts. So in order to heal, we must begin by opening our hearts and finding our way back to love, to a belief in ourselves. Now, yoga, mindfulness, mantra, mudra, shanting, cacao, essential oils, and not even to mention all these lovely crystals that we can work with, all this can help us to develop and deepen our self-love. And um so with this guided journal my intention was what i call to find drops of stillness during the day um, that we could schedule help us with a journal this one or maybe another that you can find a drop of stillness maybe in the hour, uh, maybe every second hour, or maybe once a day, to drop in to yourself, to, um, we will do one together, but to open the book um, and find um, a question, uh, maybe a reminder, and go into a drop of stillness and begin to write. And in this writing, begin to see the keywords. Uh, how we can detangle and live the life that we actually really are here to live. And it's, I mean, in yoga, we call this, uh, the work with this is actually to find what is my sankalpa? What is my deep, deep, deep um, heart will for this life? How, what do I want to offer? What do I want to um, um, bring out the most and by working with ourselves if we have had these obstacles that um, close us down this will help us to find so we can begin to walk the path that we want to walk instead of just sliding uh, by seeing our life 
passing. And um, when I began my practice, when I began my yoga, my journaling, my obsession with uh, all the oils and all the nature, I was doing that. I was walking beside myself. I was not living my life. I was more living a life that people expected me to live. And also from a deep and um, um, difficult sexual trauma when I was 15, everything was shattered and shut down. And maybe not so much the vent in itself, but the isolation after. And when I began to break, when I began to open, uh, crack and begin to share, there was a whole world of um, love. So I nourished my courage and the courage nourished my love. And I began to see that, okay, we are here to help each other, to, to, um, to listen, to share and, and to offer. Um, and um, uh, one of the lovely um, works that we can do also, because it is difficult, it is hard, um, is to write in a flow. And sometimes when we write, we see, that, oh my God, this is not um, something I wish for. I can write down what I want to release. And we can do this lovely ceremony about it. I will just read here. A good way to get out uh, of any vicious circle is to write about the difficult situation that we are in, have been in, continue to be in. Writing about it and then reading back over what have written, what you have written can help you understand. So we will write, we will write on a piece of paper and then we will describe the incident and we will create a ritual. And with this paper we will actually burn it and we will create a ritual sitting there letting the part of us or um, the scar that uh, is there or uh, the issue uh, that hurts we will let it burn and we will make it like a ritual and there we can invite these lovely oils the crystals the cacao uh, and we can do it as many times as we want. And you know, the beautiful thing with having events is that it is not the same thing to let something go, to release it and to forget, because we don't want to forget. We want to honor, as yogis, we want to, that's our work, to honor the heavy and the light, uh, to hold them both and to see that it actually energies both of them. Uh, a lovely marriage and uh, maybe a funeral. It's energies how we, and it's energies what we meet, the happy and, and the sad. And if we can begin to hold them, to make them sacred, to, to nourish both of them, um, I think it will help us to walk more balanced and also to meet the challenges that will come because they will come and to meet the love that will come because sometimes that is also overwhelming <laughs> and you know we leave and we begin to maybe not being ourselves so yes that's a lovely exercise for you to do uh, or for us to do I do it often at home and in the book I have of course written that you know, you have to, if you put it on fire, you have to do it safely. And you know, <laughs> when you write a book, you have to write all these precautions, right? Okay, so um, now uh, I wanted to um, just read to you also here. Um, I just have to find my notes. Um, so when we begin, if, especially if we have something that is there, we feel it's there and we don't really want to go into it, but maybe one day we wake up and it's like, okay, I have to do this now. It's really the route to rise, right? To, to go down deep into this 
um, the dark energy. And that's why it's so important, like today is such a great day, this to when the dark means the meet this, this light. And that's what happens. And I mean, <laughs> I work as a doula and just before the baby comes out, sometimes it gets stuck in the vagina and that is called the ring of fire. And it's just, you know, it hurts so damn much, but then it comes out in the light and you meet your soul and your eyes meet the soul of the baby's eyes. And there is everything is forgotten. I mean, we don't remember this ring of fire. So it hurts to break through. Um, and I know that you know, but it's what, you know, I really want to, to speak about. And um, so when we do our practices, um, for me, it's really, I've been, I, I wrote this like this. Um, before we sit down with our notebooks, with our guided journals, we should all take a moment and remind ourselves of the good around us, because how bad it is right now, we have good things around us, right? We have maybe a house, we have food, we have friendship, because gratitude is such a big part of inner healing. And if we can begin to work with a little piece of gratitude, and when we focus on that, where our attention goes, it will flow. And then, we'll, and, and then we'll grow. And then also, before we begin our journaling, we send out a message to the universe. We send out a message that we are ready for a change. And I think that is such an important thing of healing. Because if we don't send out, if we begin to... Um, think of ourselves as the person that had that trauma or has that bad relationship, or I am so bad at that, then it won't change. But if we send out a message to the universe, you know, a real true message with a pen to paper and add in all that you need, your cardic, your oils, your crystals, maybe just a stone from your garden, your cacao, your uh, just fresh water, um, to send out this true, real message to the universe that you want a change, then the universe will listen and we will begin to work together. And so by visualizing what is important for us and expressing it in writing, uh, my belief uh, is that we will be manifesting our energy and it will help the energy to transform. It will help to make it happen. And then I just finished this. So write down your truth and magic will occur. Because I believe in everyday magic. I believe in the magic of the breath when we breathe in the inspiration and when we breathe out the exploration and giving back to others. And the day we don't have that breath anymore in this lifetime, well, then it's accomplished. So it is magic. I believe so much in the everyday magic. And I'm just saying that in that room there, I'm just right now holding a teacher training for pregnancy yoga teachers. And I'm just to them, the pupils about the magic that happens. I mean, I'm pregnant. It's like, okay, but to get pregnant and then what happens, how the explore, it explores itself and it creates this embryo and it begins a heart and how the whole body unfolds and the intelligence of the body. It's so much magic. We carry, we walk around with it. <laughs> And sometimes we know where Utah is, but we don't know where our, you know, kidneys are. So <laughs> we have so much magic within us. And in this book, it's, uh, I, I wanted to show you all the pages and all the illustrations, but 
I'm not going to take any more time now because I want Vanessa to put us together in this such lovely, beautiful, and uh, creative event to have her lovely finishing off. But I would just like you all to, if you wish, maybe you don't have a pen and paper. Uh, if you have, just take the pen and please just close your eyes for a while. And let's together take this magical, inspirational breath in through our both nostrils. And then open the mouth and release out. We'll do that twice times more. Inhale deep. And once more, inhale deep, hold the breath in for a while, call for your support, exhale through both nostrils. And now just continue to breathe in and out. and send a loving message to the universe that you are ready for a change in the area that first now comes to your attention. And visualize how you by writing about it will help the change to unfold, to show itself for you. So the question for you to answer within your head or with a pen to paper is actually not a question it's more um, a, uh, it's more an opening for you. The words is, this is my truth. So listen within, just put the pen to paper, write whatever you want. This is my truth. The first thing that comes to you without the intellect, without the judgment, this is my truth. just continue if you wish or just let your hands just rest on your heart elongate your spine open your heart by rolling your shoulders back and just lift your face up to the universe the moon the stars the sun and with deep gratitude just take a deep breath in and exhale. So thank you so much for just being together in community. And thank you, Vanessa, for bringing us all together. I am so honored. And touched. Oh, you're so beautiful, Angel. Thank you. That was beautiful, Jenny. <laughs> I'm feeling those tears. When you took us down the birth canal and 
the remembrance of the ring of fire and how many times we feel that in our lives like we're right at the cusp it's really painful and rather than forcing and trying to squeeze past the pain push past the pain it's the moment for the in-breath it's the moment of surrender of true surrender because our body our spirit our whole being knows what to do in that moment to transcend whatever it is we're going through so thank you for that blessed reminder my love thank you do you see why i wanted to bring these amazing magic weavers together in this space <laughs> i mean we could just sit here all night together all day for those that are in uk and europe i've loved every moment of this and um we're going to wrap up at the end with the the winner of because we have two prizes right one is for those that were responding and following and doing all the things on the socials and then the other was for those someone will win who's showing up here live and um sam sam has um has done the draw so i actually know who it is and i'm very excited i want to connect you with with something so i have um i have had the deep honor of remembrance throughout my life with the best daddy in the world who um he's still alive i'm not speaking about him in past tense but just passed as in from when i was a little girl um who had this phenomenal capacity to just let me be <laughs> if I wanted to come in and talk about my conversations with the trees and and um, the different animal kingdom and the plants which I literally did all the time I think he I, you know I, I think the day there was a conversation with ants that I had and I had a complete revelation about ants and bees that was one of my favorites and I had this tree this guardian on our land <laughs> where I grew up for my teens and I always, I'm such a tree girl, I'm definitely um, a fairy of the forest and and he would just listen. He always, it didn't matter what he was doing or what he was in the middle of, he would put that book down, for instance, because we're big book lovers, and he would just say, of course I have time for you, right now is perfect. Princess, that was one of my nicknames. I had Princess and I had Pixie. And um, and so <clears throat> I stay connected. And I remember the moment in my 20s when I had been dating this beautiful soul. I was always blessed with the most divine relationships. And um, and the universe would always tell me when it was time to to release, to let go. And I always loved them in that moment. There was never anything that I could put my finger on that was wrong or why we should break up. But if I didn't listen, I mean, the universe would kind of nudge me, poke me, prod me and give me a kick up the ass if I didn't listen. So I just knew to listen, to trust. And this one man in particular, it was time to, to release. And I remember the pain of it and seeing his pain as he had a cathartic release around that. He's like, but we're soulmates and da da da. And I just had this deep inner knowing. <clears throat> it was time. And I said to the universe, are you serious? Like this level of pain that humans have to go through is ridiculous. I just need to switch off for a bit. Just tune me out. I'm done. Just for a bit. I need to just go to sleep. Can, can we do that? Just give me five minutes to do that. So I, I'm not sure how long that lasted on the earth plane. Um, I did go into a, a massive grief when I lost, um, you know, when we grew up our generation and we had aunties and uncles that weren't really our aunts and uncles, but we grew up with the fake real aunties and uncles. And so their kids were like our cousins. Well, one of those, John, he was, he was more than that. He was like my brother. And um, the morning... The morning that he died, I remember the phone ringing and the three phones in our house, mum picked up one, 
dad picked up mum picked up the one in her room dad picked up the one in the spare room in the in the kitchen and i picked up the one in his library all at the same time and his sister the middle one there were two older sisters was screaming down the phone saying he's gone he's gone he's gone and my mum was saying what who and i just knew and i just put the phone down and i just knew and it was in that moment that i i really just went okay i'm done fuck you screw you i am done this was not supposed to happen and um i remember recently my dad said to me um I didn't know if I was ever going to get you back, baby girl. I didn't know if I was ever going to get you fully back, if you were going to come home again. And I knew what he meant um, because the universe has been, we had a pact in this lifetime and the universe has stuck to it. And I needed that moment of reprieve, but it's always been very clear that I'm here for the reminder of the return to love. And I do that um, in union with Gaia you know, with my mama. And so I was blessed with many earth mamas on this physical plane, as well as my own, of course. And so when I switched off um, and then I came back again, it was really interesting because it wasn't just a matter of just switching on and putting on the button and dropping back into meditation and being able to sit for eight hours or 10 hours like I used to. It was like I had to regrow those muscles you know and let my my heart wings unfurl again and cacao reminds us that life is bittersweet the goddess in all her forms and all the gods remind us that our journey is what it is because we are gods and goddesses incarnate on the earth plane and we actually said yes because we wanted for whatever reason to experience an earthly experience and the essential oils the plants from which they come speak to us the plants the animals they all speak to us and so where i'd love to end with you is with the oils and with a channeling from Mama Gaia, would that be okay? And then I'll announce the video, the um, the winner. So the essential oils that wanted to play with you, I actually put red mandarin and star anise in my cacao. So star anise I spoke to earlier, amazing for the crown chakra. Red mandarin is like the crone mama or the wise, sorry, or the wise, um, the wise sage energy. Um, and a big message for right now is, you know, the masculine feminine, whether you call it divine or sacred, masculine or feminine, we, we're going to be moving away from these terms because it really is about oneness. It is very much. And and I don't know that it is quite right either. That's where, that's where Chloe was actually stumbling. Did you notice? Because it doesn't quite encompass it either. It's, it's just, it's oneness. And that's Jamie's insistence on it's not just feminine. You know, and he's right, it's not, it's all of it. She, he, he, she, and all of that will dissolve. And so we just come back to that eternal flame, which is love, which is love. So I don't know what that looks like yet, but that is definitely something coming through all the time. And then I also had cacao. So interesting, Jamie and Chloe, you mentioned her as well, her hymn. And um, cacao is, uh, sorry, cardamom, not cacao, cardamom. So cardamom is really beautiful for new moon time because I know a lot of you will focus on your intentions. So where dark of the moon, you create spaciousness because you're releasing, you're relinquishing what doesn't serve you. You create this vortex of space within you. And when you have space, the universe will fill it. And that's why you plant the seeds of your intentions. So fennel, um, cacao, you could have used, I could have had celery seed, vanilla, um, cardamom all of those they're seeds okay so they they talk about um or they whisper to us or they sing into us work with me as you plant your seeds in that infinite field of total possibility infinite possibilities and let yourself open to that potentiality that lives within you 
which is what Jenny spoke to so utterly gloriously. Isn't she just divine? Aren't they all divine? And and then I had Black Pepper, and he's like, come on, y'all, wake up. What are these masks? What are these veils? What's this stuff you're carrying around you that doesn't need to be there? You can transmute it. Black pepper with the fruits. There's juniper berry with litsia, so the berries and the fruits. They are part of the fire elements. Let me light you up. Let me remind you of your godliness, your holiness, your oneness with all that is, all that has been, and all that ever shall be. And so with this blend, we lift the veil. We lift the veil to our awakening. And great-grandma Magnolia wanted to come in and say, remember, I'm great with the new moon too, honey. The wise, wise, wise one who says, look within you, be ye man or woman, look within you and listen to her story, not only his story. Create your stories anew. What will you choose? You literally have the answers within you. Why do you seek outside of you always? Why do you hide from it? Why do you deny yourself? Listen. And I will tell you that whenever you work with that ancient crone energy like Red Mandarin and Magnolia, and Blue Lotus transcends it all, but they'll poke fun at you. <laughs> you know, they'll laugh. That's the litzia. The laughter comes in. This spiritual journey isn't meant to be all serious. They'll have so much fun with you. Have fun. Your innate state is joy anyway, so be it. You're born of love. You're made of love. You're pure love. Your spirit contains within it this physical sacredness of you. You are held within the spirit. I know people talk about the spirit within you, and of course it is because it's imbued in everything, but it's actually your spirit. And then you're just like dancing in that spirit, which is in the eternal. Yeah? So as Adam Barrelly and I, another amazing soul brother of mine, um, decided we were going to write this book, we sat, and um, me being me, I'm not so great with channeling on technology, though I've shifted that story. I really have, but I wasn't back then. So what we did was we voice recorded and we just channeled and we'd take the lid off the oils and we'd smell them, we'd connect with the spirit of the plant and the message the plant wanted to bring. This does not mean this is the only message. This does not mean we are right. That is, that is not what I'm saying here. You know you, you get your connection with the plants the way you do. We could only fit a certain amount per page and we want you to journey the way you do. But what we did was we got together on the eve of the summer solstice, your winter solstice in the northern hemisphere. So it was, um, you know, that, that time of between the 20th and 22nd and we spent that time together and we just went into a vortex. And if it wasn't for Jonathan, his partner, we wouldn't have eaten. He filled us with cacao <laughs> and cacao, chocolate and, and food, you know. And we just kept going and it was amazing. We had a goshawk visit us. We had bandicoots. We had the most incredible eagles soaring over us. The blessings were phenomenal. We were surrounded by eucalypts. It was, it was amazing. And then after it, he said, hey, Vanessa, are you up for just the last little thing we're going to need for our book? Can, can you go into a channeling space? I said, absolutely. So they their house then was this A-frame and we went right to the top of it. So it was like we were in the treetops. We we're literally elevated and up in the treetops, just like Chloe and Jamie, where they are. And, um, and it was beautiful. And so I just went in that space, connecting with the Akashic records of the land, of the cosmos. And then Adam starts speaking and both of us are, um, you know, initiated in ancient rites and, and he opened up the space and I just... I just was brought to tears and he took me into a space of being the embodiment of Mama Gaia, right? So this, this ain't me, babies, and I'm not saying that to be humble. This is the words that she wanted to bring through. And of course, um, you know, we're, we're limited by our own vocabulary 
and my vocabulary is very distinct and very clear with what the universe gives me and so I'll hear certain things and I need to translate it so this is just my translation so again you need to feel how this feels for you but I will tell you this is the only part in our whole book we have over 100 essential oils in here and there's you know amazing two page dedications per essential oil and my master blends and it was edited <laughs> it was heavily edited this page here is the only part that wasn't and this is what i'm going to share with you now and then we will announce the winner so if you want to take a deep breath you want to snuggle into that snuggle rug you want to sit back close your eyes just shut them down so you don't have the brightness of this screen around you and i want you to just tap into your gratitude for each other for being here this incredible tribe women and men that have invested in this sacred moment in time to receive what comes through in this holy instant and your gratitude for Paige and Leah and Chloe and Jamie and Jenny and their holy offerings to us To the divinity within you and all around you shows up in every which way and to mama gaia oh mama we love you so much thank you for the gifts of cacao <laughs> the essential oils the plants the animals the crystals the music that you sing into every cell of our body a message from gaia my dear children Take your sorrows, take your burdens, take your challenges and give them to me that I may transform them, return them to love. Now hear me, walk this earth with courage, with conviction, know thyself and connect with thy purpose. Remember why you are here. Be not afraid, for I and my companions stand with you, by you, for you. Remember that for every dark moment, there are many more moments of light. You are a light worker. This means many will flock to you, come to you, be drawn to you. Some, my child, will have ill intent. That is well, for that will humble you. It will remind you of your purpose, the why and the wherefore. Remember who you are and stand in this, a warrior of light. A servant of love. Enter into the bowels of the earth, feel the tremors, hear my heartbeat. There is goodness there. Be not afraid, for I am with you. Take that which no longer serves you and take it deep down into this space. Feel the resonance of my heartbeat. Feel each connection point, each tendril reaching out from me to you and you to me. Look not above, child. Look within. Breathe those intentions in. And as you exhale, send them out. My companions from the plant kingdom will carry them forth into the world. As you work with these treasures that I deliver to you, remember to be grateful in every moment. These are my gifts to you, my sacrifice to enhance your life. Give thanks. Stand strong. Use these gifts to serve a higher purpose. Be not deceived. These are not only for the physical realm. These will help the many of you that are searching, searching for something more 
something deeper, something beyond what you have, beyond who you are. Revere them, honor them, create with them. This gift of love is my ultimate gift to you. Give to me your heavy burdens, your challenges, that which weighs heavily upon you. Surrender it to me, child, and I will transmute it. There is much that can be done in silence. There is much that can be heard here. Learn to listen again and hear the song, the message, the story that these gifts bring. Remember, remember who you are. We will journey this life with you. Wait not for a special occasion to enter into sacred ceremony, sacred service to you. Let every moment be sacred because it is. Align your heart with the heartbeat of the Great Mother. Feel her, breathe with her and you will come home to love, to you, to your power, to your truth. Be not afraid. You are so protected. You are so loved. And you are safe. I love you. Mm. Okay. Let me open said technology because Sammy has landed this here for me okay so the winner of an akashic record reading with me my book gifts of the essential oils the cherokee oracle deck the healing you journal a beautiful Yummy, delicious altar cloth. Aren't they so good? Chloe, you want one now, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. And a sacred crystal unk. Talk about sacred feminine masculine dissolving into oneness, heaven and earth right here, right present. The unk. Magic. And of course the sacred elixir magic the winner is <laughs> jennifer snowball <laughs> i'm so happy for you goddess <laughs> so happy for you so 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 happy for you honey girl do you want to come off mute do you want to say anything i can feel all that emotion I knew it was me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But thank you. That's that's amazing. It's been a truly gift of an evening. Thank you so much. And everyone here, just beautiful. Mm, I, feel it. I got all that um, sacred elixir and I had a drop of rose in it, so it's just like, oh. So... <laughs> Lots of love coming out. <laughs> Thank you. Mm, fantastic. Congratulations, my love. So, darling hearts, that is it. That is us. Please come and play with us in our little playground on Instagram. You've got all the follows. Come see us. Come chat to us. 
Chloe and Jamie will be offering sacred ceremony live um, from their home in the hills. So keep an eye out for those in Victoria. The hills are beautiful there. That's where I grew up. And Paige and Leah do lots online, as do I. Um, Jen, for those of you that are there, you do stuff face-to-face -face and online as well, don't you, Jenny? Your offerings. So that's all there. We've linked you to everything so you can, you know, purchase with in full consciousness that you're giving back to your tribe. Um, I just want to say thank you for being here, for being so present. I've really felt you all. And it's been absolutely yummy. Yummy is one of the words in one of the um, Eskimo languages. I'm not sure which, which one it is. Um, and yummy is one of their words for love. Isn't that beautiful? When I discovered that, I was like, oh my gosh, I wonder why I say yummy for everything. Everything's yummy in my world. So yeah, I'm glad you're all feeling grateful and blessed. And tonight or today, wherever you are, was yummy for you. Thank you to Leah and Paige and Chloe and Jamie and Jenny for giving yourselves so deeply. Thank you to Sam Franklin, my amazing angel who works by my side, who came up with the idea for tonight and brought us all together here. Yeah, it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Take care of you. We'll be sending out the recording. Follow us if you want any of our offerings. DM us and we'll let you know how you can receive, receive, receive from us. So, I'm going to stop the recording.